Rick James. <laughs> Open like a window, no window. Look at the videos and stuff that could be you. Because they like to sign you on. And everybody on the East Coast calls me Don. I'm like, what is Don? My, my mom thought I was uh, on Long Island, but I was at Howard Homecoming. Ready? Turn it up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya On Air. I'm your host, Sonya Hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single show? You guessed it. I have another great show for you. But before we get to today's guest, I need you to do me a quick favor. Just a little quick favor, a free favor. I need you to subscribe. Make sure that you subscribe to every Sonya On Air streaming platform. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the notification bell. That way, every time I upload an old new celebrity interview unpacking their pivotal moments and milestones, you'll be the first ones to know. 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 Subscribe, subscribe. Notification bell. <laughs> also, sign your on-air streams across Amazon Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, iHeart Radio, Pandora, every major streaming platform. Sign your on-air is there. Now to today's guest, child. I couldn't hold it in any longer. I can't keep a secret. I try. I try to keep a secret. I cannot do it but for the life of me. If I'm happy about something, I want you to be happy too. So it is not too often that I get to meet an individual who has the same name as me. Not too often. I come across tons, tons of Sonia's. But Sonia's ain't like Sonia's, child. It's a whole different breed. If you are named Sonia, there is something amazing. There is something mystical about you. So today's guest, none other than Olympic track star and personality on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Sonia Richards Ross. Hmm. <laughs> Love. Let me tell you. When they announced that she was going to be joining the cast, this has been like maybe a year or two ago. I can't recall. It's too many shows, child. They on the 5th, 11th season. I don't know. But I know that she's still considered to be like a new cast member. And I was kind of shocked. I'm like, child, she done went from running the 400 to running around some females. And it is a marathon. Child, I know that you used to running, you know, maybe a lap or two around the track, but you are running a marathon with these women. She can't catch a break, Sonia. I uh, do I like her on the show? I think that how she's leading her narrative doesn't align with how the show was created. What I would like to see when I'm looking at these reality shows, especially the franchise, you know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Love and DC, Love and Marriage DC, um, Love and Marriage Huntsville, those type of shows, when you are chronicling the lives of individuals, these reality unscripted, unscripted shows, I don't I don't just want to endure 40 minutes to an hour of arguing. Child, I could just go on any Brooklyn street in front of any bodega when somebody swiped their EBT card and is limited funds and they can't buy the milk for Tay-Tay. Or I can go to Wall Street. And, you know, when the, the numbers go down and the S&P, that's standing in the porch for people who don't know. When the S&Ps decline and then the investors just come out of their offices cursing, screaming. I could go outside for all of that. What I would really like to see is them more so in their professional lives, the professional endeavors and how it connects with the other women supporting each other, whether or not you are an entrepreneur, whether or not you are an employee. I just want to see more than paid for shade because what it really seems is if once these personalities join these reality shows, it's like, okay, how can I get these quick one-liners 
so that, you know, someone can upload it onto social media so that it becomes a trending topic. Uh, yeah. Can, can we just like throw that formula away? It's just getting old. It's getting old. And what will happen if this type of formula, you know, persists? People are going to start going back to scripted TV. People are getting tired, tired, tired. Now, don't get me wrong. I have a guilty pleasure of everything reality television, everything reality television. But it just seems as if I'm watching the same shows, but on different networks. So, you know, a lot of you are saying that you're not feeling Sonya Richards Ross because she's not bringing it to television. Trauma. If ever you want to know if a person is healed from the trauma, ask them their opinions on reality television. Now, if you watch reality television like me, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you just say, you know, well, they didn't argue this episode, so I'm going to give it a three. Or, you know, when you're saying that Sonya, not me, Sonya. But the other Sonya, Richard Ross, was coming up in a few moments. When you're saying that she's not giving it up for the cameras, um, what you're really saying is that she's not one to argue. Child, she got too much to lose. Not to say that the other women don't. But what I believe is that Sonya Richards Ross's brand goes way beyond the Real Housewives of Atlanta, if you allow it. Remember, she had her own, um, she was co-hosting some sort of TV show where um, she was interviewing um, celebrities, athletes, personalities. It didn't last at all. But she's also a sports commentator. So if you are heavily into sports, like I used, I used to be a track star, honey. I used to be a track star. <laughs> you know about Sonya Richards Ross. So now that she has expanded her audience to now include people who love reality television, I just want you to understand that women, especially black women, should be allowed to be someone else other than, other than petty, trauma-filled, trauma leading toxic we are more than that and it's a shame that if we don't give you those certain type of attributes on television or on social media you don't check for it and that makes me want to ask the general public you when are you going to start your healing so that you know petty or toxic television isn't your go-to it is sort of like your white noise to say you know what I've done a lot of the necessary work, the hard work, the boring work that, you know, people might say is kind of boring. Now, you know what, let me have some fun. Let me watch some reality television. If you lead with it that way, then I don't think that you would kind of rely on reality television so much. So I have a lot of questions for Sonya. And just also to give you a backstory, I've been planning this interview for a while. When I first found out that she was going to be on the show, I've been emailing her publicist, her team, like, let's make it happen. And this year they finally responded. And what she did mention on this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta is that her brother-in-law was serving as her assistant. And I think that was the assistant that I was communicating with in order to bring this interview into fruition. Yeah. I was in the studio like I am today, just awaiting, waiting with my notes. Waiting with my notes, child. And um, I'm just sitting there. Five minutes pass, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, no show. I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? So respect people's time. Respect people's intellectual property. But I think he's gone, her brother-in-law, because the sister and her husband, which is her brother-in-law, which who was her secretary, they don't call them secretaries anymore, personal assistant. I think she fired him or he left. But as soon as that happened, this interview was made possible. So why don't we do this? 
why don't we just take a few commercial breaks and um, I'll be right back with Sonia Riches Roth. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be right back with Sonia on air. Smooches. Sonia on Air is honored to have Style Esteem as an official show sponsor. Turbans have been adorned across the globe to honor culture, faith, and fashion for over 4,000 years by men and women alike. And yet, every turban is personal because it celebrates the history of the wearer. Style Esteem embodies the time-honored tradition of turbans with fashionable styles for every season and occasion. Created by Sonia Keshwani, a breast cancer survivor, each piece is a one of a kind that celebrates you. Get yours today by looking in the description section for the link. It's time to go shopping and you're just in time for the all new Sonya On Air Spring Summer Merchandise Collection. I owe that one to Miss Sheree Whitfield. She by Sheree. You know, it's a spring summer collection. Do you work out on the regular? Fuel your cart goals with Instacart the go-to service for quick delivery straight to your home. Use the special Sonia on Air link below. Hi. Hi, Sonia. How uh -oh. are you? Hi, Sonia. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is monumentous because this is the first time that I've ever addressed someone by, hi, Sonia. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so I'm much good. for joining me. I know that your time is limited, so we're going to get right to it, okay? <laughs> yes, thanks for having me. I'm happy we finally got it to work. I know, I know, but no worries. We're here now. So I know what they told me when I was a young girl is that if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Now, we know you as a track and field superstar, but now the audience has become wider because they see you as a cast member on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Right. Once you transitioned from being a track star, did you ever think that you would land on reality television? Well, I, I thought I might do reality TV, but I never thought I would do the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> you know, for a lot of reasons. I mean, I wasn't living in Atlanta. Um, and so I just thought that that would have been such a far-fetched thing to happen. But like you said, you know, we make plans and God laughs. And so, you know, I thought this was a great opportunity when they, when they reached out to me to potentially be on the show. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, you know, Sonia, you kind of mentioned it. Like, there is no blueprint after you win an Olympic gold medal. Like, what did you do next? You know, you spent your whole life dedicated to sports. And now it's like, okay, the obvious jobs are coaching. Obviously, mm -hmm. I get to broadcast what I love. But it's like, what what's next? What else? You know, mm -hmm. and so... I feel very blessed to have had this opportunity to be a part of this iconic show and, you know, just continuing to just navigate the space and hopefully show up, you know, fully and positively and, and all those good things. Got it. But, you know, I want to capture on something that you said, because women, as we navigate our careers, we were taught to believe you get a good job and you stay there until you retire. Did you have any type of fear or anxiety as you were transitioning out of track and field? What was that like? Oh, a great question. A great question. Um, you know, I was I, I was very fortunate um, and very intentional uh, mm -hmm. in my last couple of years of competing because I had seen so many of my peers uh, who were either forced to retire or who retired and just completely lost their way, like had no idea what they wanted to do next, had not put any thought into it. And I was determined not to be that. I was determined mm -hmm. not to leave track and field and lose myself. And so mm. for about a year, year and a half before I retired, because I planned my retirement in 2016, um, I was just, you know, I, I started to release this idea of just being this track star. And I started to look out and think like, what else can I do? What, how else can I contribute to the world? What else has sports taught me that I could use um, in other ways that could be, you know, that could be, become a career? And so mm. I started networking, started meeting people, <laughs> started, you know, planting seeds. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget Lewis Johnson, who is now my colleague, asked me after the, my final race, he says, so you've dominated at the, tr you know, in this world and, you know, you've gone on to do great things. What can we expect you to do next? And I mm -hmm. said, I want to write a book. I want to start a family and I want to start broadcasting. And NBC literally called me the next day, like the next morning. Wow. Are you serious? Are you yeah. So, you know, I think it was really just about really being intentional mm -hmm. um, and not life happen, but really like being, you know, like, okay, this is what I would like to happen and doing yeah. the best that I could to make that outcome a reality. 
Got it. I love that you mentioned the intentionality of it all because people need to understand that you are the captain of your next steps. You know, yeah. God will give you the energy that you need and everything is preordained, but you have to do the work. But I know as a track and field yeah. star, it takes a lot of mental and physical um, stamina. Now, as a yeah. cast member on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, <laughs> what type of attributes do you need to be a successful cast member? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a, that's a great question. I'm still figuring it out. I think that you have to be bold and confident. Mm -hmm. I think you have to have, um, and this is one of the things I think you also needed in sports. You got to have like a short memory. You can't, you can't be someone who's affected by everything done and said. Mm -hmm. um, you can't carry that weight with you to every um, moment, every scene, every, you know, it's, you just got to have like a short memory. And you got to have a POV. You know, you have to have mm. a perspective um, and be willing to stand on that right or wrong in that moment because, you know, every single person is coming with their POV um, and they're strong and proud about it. And so I think that that's what it is. It's about showing up with a POV, being confident, having a short memory span, um, mm. and, and it's got to be a little bit self-deprecating. I think that if you take mm. yourself too seriously um, in this space, it's really hard because the fans are giving you so much feedback. There's just so many things happening. It's like, look, like, just like sports, you step on the track, some days to 48, some days to 52. <laughs> you, <Yeah>. know? <laughs> like, you know? You live to run another day, you know? So you just go out and you keep, and you keep trying to figure it out. But it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a steep learning curve in this space, but I still enjoy it. And I'm really enjoying getting to know the girls. And, you know, I hope I get um, an opportunity to continue to do it. Got it. So you talked about having your own point of view or POV. Now, I know that sometimes you come in with your own intention, but yeah. after, you know, some seasons, you have audiences or viewers of the show saying, I need more. When you went into this right. new season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, did you go into it saying, I need to be true to myself or let me just give the audience what they want to see? No, I think for me this season, it was more about um, being more of myself. You know, I think, I think if anyone is reasonable and rational, um, whenever you go into a new space, whether that is a new college or a new job or, you know, a new environment, you're obviously navigating, figuring out the space, the people, and how you show up fully authentically. Nobody just busts in the door like, hey, like, you know, I'm here. Um, and usually if you do, it's not received well, <laughs> you know? And so for me, for season two, I, I wanted to one, develop some more of the friendships off camera and really spend time getting to know the ladies. And mm -hmm. then in season two, just showing up more and more authentically as myself and more wholly as myself. Um, I, I didn't, I try not to pay too much attention to what the fans want because I feel like the fans can be fickle and what they want today is not what they want tomorrow. So if you're doing that, <laughs> you know, that could change up on you. So it yeah. really was more about really showing up more as myself. And I think as the season progresses, I, I become more and more proud of seeing myself and how I show up. But I think I think the first phase is really hard because you're getting to learn to know people and, you know, like what like how do the dynamics of the friendships work um, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So, um, yeah, that was my goal this season. Got it. So how did you build relationships on the show? What did you do? Well, um, in the off season, uh, Candy and I went on a family trip that was really cool because um, we got to spend some time with our families and our kids really connected. And that was nice to spend some time off camera getting to know her. Mm -hmm. um, Marlo and I, our friendship has organically just grown. We talk almost every day on the phone and, um, you know, she, her and I, whatever it is, we just, we just really mesh well together. She's such a thoughtful, you know, sensitive person. And I hate that sometimes, you know, on the show, people don't get to see the fullness of her, yeah. her personality and her character. But for me, you know, behind the scenes as a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. friend, she's really been, awesome you know and and drew and i obviously we we mend our friendship this year on the show so we're slowly trying to rebuild a friendship um sheree and i are really cool so you know it's really about trying to make time mm -hmm. and space in the off season we're all super busy um trying to develop the friendships whether that's on the phone or in person um but just like you know like i said i, I, I try to always be intentional about things that matter to me so being intentional about building those friendships as well Got it. Got it. So you mentioned building relationships off camera. Has there been a cast member who showed up differently once the cameras were turned on? Yeah. I mean, that's been my complaint about Drew the entire, you know, since I've met her, like I, 
you know, the reality is I met Drew three weeks before we started filming. So, you know, I know people are like, oh, like we come on as friends, but it was just, we were new friends, you know, we don't have a lot of history. And so what I knew of Drew was just, I met what, what I knew in those three or four meetups. And then we get on camera and a lot of who she was to me, like when we went to lunch or when I went to her house was, I wasn't getting that same person. And mm -hmm. obviously we ended up having this huge misunderstanding and, you know, on the show. And a large part of that was because the things that we say off camera, when we go on camera, she, she flips it, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's insane. Um, and she, I think she is the, the, the worst of them. Like as far as everyone else, I feel like for the most part, it feels the same on and mm -hmm. off camera, but it's like, you really don't know what you're going to get. And I tell people all the time, I don't know if she realizes that she does it because <laughs> we all call her on it and she can't, right. and she doesn't change. Wow. But I just, the one who I think is the trickiest person on and off camera, because one day, you know, we're texting, we're super cool. And the next minute on camera, it's a totally different story. Got it. You know, what I like to see um, during this season of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Marlo is facing a lot of controversy amongst the cast. But I like to yeah. see how yeah. you are staying true and loyal to her as a friend and speaking up yeah. for her and advocating for her. Um, how do you feel about Marlo being given a peach on the show? And do you think that she deserves it? I, I definitely think she deserves it. I mean, Marlo had been... Uh, loyal incredible friend of the show for many years and people loved her in that capacity and i think that when um you know the cast was shifting and people were moving on it was natural for marlo someone who everyone knew and you know loved as a friend of the show to transition to to getting a peach um and so i think that i think she's 100 percent deserving of the peach um mm -hmm. i just know it's been a challenge for her to navigate some of the relationships on the show and mm -hmm. a lot of that history predates me as far as their re relationships and their experiences with marlo but, mm -hmm. but you know ultimately like i said it's, it's you know and i know i'm a little bit biased because i have a personal relationship with her and an intimate relationship with her but i think she's a great girl um yeah. and i know that she wants to be better and show up better <laughs> but you know, for some reason, certain triggers just make her go over the top. And, um, you know, I hope that she's able to kind of get that more under control in the future and people get to see the Marlo that I, I have been experiencing, which is just, you know, awesome. But, you know, that's a good storyline as well, because she's showing how well, Marlo's showing how she responds when she's triggered. We don't see that a lot. You know, everyone's triggered in everyday life. But to see right. someone actually going through it and dealing with it acknowledging it and getting the help that she needs for it. I love the storyline and I don't understand why audiences are saying, you know, that she doesn't deserve a peach and, you know, she's crying over spilled milk. I love this storyline because we just don't want to see the arguing. We want to see your real moments and how you navigate through it. So, you yeah. know, we appreciate that, but we did throw out three names. We threw out, well, your name because you're on sign you in there right now, Marlo and Drew. Now audiences are also saying that, all three of you need to be removed from the show because you're not understanding the assignment. Has any producer come to you and said that your job is in jeopardy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, I, but I'll be honest, I'm new to this whole thing. I don't know, you know how that works and at what point that conversation would happen. But I think that ultimately fans need to watch the full season unfold. I think that, you know, it's, it's too early in the season um, to, to make those, you know, um, assumptions or to make those demands, you know, of the cast. Because we literally have 10 or 11 or 12 more episodes to go. Um, and the friendships evolve. You know, a lot mm. happens before the end of the season. So no, you know, and I also think, I mean, obviously I have been, um, you know, a fan of the reality world for a long time. There are very few new housewives who <laughs> they're like, yeah, she's the one. It's like everyone has to right. pay their food and it takes time. And yeah. so, you know, I, I put the grain of salt, you know, obviously um, I feel like the fans can be fickle. Like I said, you know, I feel like fans are asking for a positive women and, you know, with family and business and it's like, you know, that's, that's what we bring to the show. And yet still it's like, oh, she's boring or, or she's this, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, um, I know what's meant to be will be, and I enjoy being a part of the cast, but just like everything else in my life, you know, it, 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 it happens for a reason, for a season, yeah. for a time. So, you know, I, I, 
I lean into more of what God has for me than what, you know, the fans are saying. And it's like, you know, I'm having a great time. So whatever happens, happens. <laughs> I'm glad that you're leading by faith because if we rely upon, you know, the world or worldly beings, we can be walking into a, a hole each and every single yes. time. So I'm glad yes. that you're once again leading with authenticity, um, truth, transparency, and is led by faith. One yeah. season on Real Housewives of Atlanta, we did see your husband get involved and that caused a little bit of controversy because they felt like men shouldn't be um, inserting themselves into women's conversations. Has anything that happened on Real Housewives of Atlanta caused you and your husband to sit down and say, okay, let's talk about this. What's really going on? No. No, you know, and to be very honest, um, I feel like the show has actually brought our, us closer together as a couple. Um, and, you know, I think even even in that moment, um, my husband was speaking up for me. You know, he mm -hmm. was standing up for his wife. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously there was a lot going on behind the scenes that you guys didn't see. Um, and he, his his comments were not intended for Sheree or Kenya. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, none of that really matters for me it was him, you know, feeling like, you know, like he, he wanted to stand up for me and for me, that meant everything. And so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, like our, it, it's been like, we see this show as something we're doing together, um, mm -hmm. as a family, he's been supremely supportive of me. And it's been, like I said, another, another area of growth in our marriage. So mm -hmm. no, I think so far has made us sit down and say, hmm, um, if anything, I think it's made us closer together. And for that, I'm really grateful. I'm grateful for that too, because we've seen countless stories of couples joining yeah. reality television and all of a sudden they're headed towards divorce. Yeah. But talking about marriage and we didn't want to say the D word, but it's all about marriage. <laughs> the construct of marriage has changed so much over the years. And I'm glad that you mentioned that your husband was just supporting his wife. That's a construct of what a marriage should include. Yeah. What do you think that women have like kind of thrown away that you think that we should kind of get back? I'll start with one. I wish women would stop going outside wearing hair bonnets. Now you go. <laughs> Well, that, that's a funny one. I mean, you know, I would, I, I think that, um, I, I was thinking a little bit deeper when you mentioned that it's, it's more about, you know, we, we're kind of in an age where there's this idea, like we don't need men and where, you know, mm -hmm. we, we can do all this stuff on our own and stuff. And, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's not necessarily that we have to need men, but we got to make them feel wanted. And I think a lot of times women, um, you know, push good men away because they have the job and they have all of these things like that's all great but there's nothing like having a companion to do life with like mm -hmm. the older i get is the more important that has become to me like life gets hard you know mm -hmm. we go through so many different things in our lives and it's like there's nothing like having someone who loves you unconditionally and supports you in your corner mm -hmm. and so whether you know that means you know like humbling yourself as a woman and you know, understanding what it means to be submissive to a man. I, you know, I think that these conversations become so ugly and so volatile so quickly. And it's like, yo, like this is the beauty of marriage. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the, 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 the bonuses of having someone in your life that you can lean on far outweigh mm -hmm. anything else. And so I just think it's about, you know, making men feel wanted, mm -hmm. um, having that humility, being willing to submit to someone who you love and trust. Mm -hmm. you're if you're married to him, I hope that you trust him to leave you. <laughs> I hope that right. you trust him as your best interest at heart. If that that's the bigger issue, <laughs> like why are you marrying a man you can't submit to? Like I don't oh. understand that. So I think I think that you know those are some of the things that as women we can kind of soften and, and lean into. And listen, I I get it. As women, we've had to be tough. We've had yeah. to be hard. Like you know, life has is is not our choice. I get it. But I also feel like we got to find that strike that balance if we want. Yeah. You know, a man who can really uh, lead us and, and, and be there for us in, in a way that husbands are called to be. Got it. You know, but as you were talking and just thinking about preparing for this conversation and when I was talking about the construct of marriage and, you know, women redefining it, you've also redefined it and just let women let it be known that it's OK to even hyphenate your last name. 
I've often thought about that. And I know that one day when I get married, my name will also be hyphenated. Mm -hmm. What was the conversation between you and your husband to make it okay for you to hyphenate your name? That's a really good question, Sonia. <laughs> very few people ask me that. Television. <laughs> yeah, very few people ask me that. But it was, so, you know, it, it, it was a tricky conversation. It was. My husband um, wanted me to lose my Richards and just be Sonia Ross. Um, and, you know, he felt like that was the sign of ultimate commitment to our, our marriage. Um, and I felt that obviously, you know, people had known me in this track and field world for 20 years as Sonia Richards, and I had done a lot of work to make my name recognizable. Um, and so I felt like it was, you know, it was worth keeping, um, and hyphenating. And so it was a, it was a conversation. And the thing about what I love most about my husband is that we communicate very well. And so, mm -hmm. although it was a difficult conversation, you know, I, I, I basically said, I was like, look. It doesn't matter what my name is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's plenty of people who lose their last name and their marriages don't work. So it has nothing to do with uh, my level of commitment to you. You know, my level of commitment to you, I show you every day. Um, and so, you know, my husband's a very reasonable man. And I think that he understood it was important to me. And he knew that it didn't mean I wasn't committed to our marriage by any means. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got to pick your battles. And he let me mm -hmm. he let me win that one. But it certainly was, you know, a, a hard conversation that we had for months before getting married. Um, and, you know, I'm just grateful that he is that kind of husband who, mm -hmm. you know, he, he'll give and take. And he was willing to say, OK, I, I understand, you know, how hard you've worked to get your name to be, you know, to mean something in the sport. And I don't want to, I don't want to take that away from you. Got it. So let's assume that if he said, no, you cannot hyphenate your name, would that have been a deal breaker and you would have not gotten married? No, it wouldn't have been a deal breaker for sure. Mm -mm. Got it. No. You know, you've really just given um, some bride to be some language. If she's <laughs> debating about hyphenating her name, like you just gave me language yeah. too, Charles. <laughs> I'm glad that yes. <laughs> but something else that is also non-traditional and that we don't see in a lot of black households is your village. Yeah. Your village living with you. And I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, so many black households believe that, oh no, you, you know, mom and dad is here and you're there and you're struggling. I'm glad that you brought your village in so that you can continue being successful. Talk about yeah. that because I know it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, no, it certainly isn't. Um, you know, it, it's been it's been really cool to share the journey of having a multi generational family live together. And mm -hmm. I feel like of all the things that I've shown on the show, that has been uh, you know something that a lot of people connect with and have reached out mm -hmm. to us and asked like, how do you make it work and all those things, you know. Um, and I, I think you you stated it correctly. That's how I think of it, right? A lot of us mm -hmm. have moved so far from this old saying that has stood the test of time for a reason. It takes a village to raise a child, you know, and so to be able to have my village right there from my son, who's an only child who gets to be with his cousins all the time. And when mm. I, if I have to leave, he sleeps in the same bed. He's like in the same environment every single day, that kind of stability and that kind of love and support, you can't pay for it. It's, 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 right. it's you know what I mean? Like when you grow up and, you, and, and people ask you like, what is a differentiator for why you achieve greatness? I always think it's the love that's poured into you. Mm. And so, you know, these are the things that matter at such a young age. So I feel very blessed to have my village, um, but it isn't easy. It is hard when you have three different households in one space and we all have different ways that we want to run our households and that we lead our families. And of course, there are three men <laughs> who are used to being like the head of the household and being in the home by themselves. It definitely presents its challenges, but I think the pros still outweigh the cons. Um, and until they don't, you know, we're going to stick it out and, um, and, and keep rocking together. I love it. I love it. You know, I always say that I have like undiagnosed ADHD. You know, as you were talking, I'm listening to your accent. I'm, you know, looking at both of our names, Sonia. So your parents are from Jamaica, right? Yes. And so am I. I was born in Jamaica too. My dad is from St. Kitts. <laughs> so the, oh, Caribbean. <laughs> the Caribbean connection. I'm, I'm thinking that's where Sonia, you know, probably came from. <laughs> you know, yes, maybe. Yes, was. yes gotta be. Yes, I want to play a little game with you. It's called Who is More Likely To? Okay? okay. Now, out of all of the housewives, I want you to tell me who is more more most likely to. 
And the first one is, who is more likely to sleep with their friend's ex? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, this is where we start, yeah. I'm from Brooklyn. This is where we start. (laughs) All right, hold on, hold on. Who is most likely to sleep with their friend's ex? Ex. Mm -hmm. You got to name one. Um, who do I think would do that? Ah, it's a hard one. <laughs> um, maybe. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. Who is more likely to see <laughs> their friend's ex? Drew. <laughs> I always throw Drew under the bus. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Who is most likely to only date wealthy men? I already have the answer for this one, but you tell me. Carlo Hanson. We know. <laughs> I, I ain't mad at her, child. I tell my daughter the same thing. <laughs> okay. Who is most likely to answer your call at 3 a.m.? Marlo. Mm. Who is more likely to b- put Vaseline on her face and jump in a fight with you? Ooh. Also Marlo. <laughs> Ooh, she's a down ass chick, huh? Oh, I'm cursing. <laughs> okay. okay, who is more than likely to lie about her income? Ah, who's most likely to lie about their income? Sheree. <laughs> 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 I only say that you know it's always something with Sheree and bills and stuff. So I love you, Sheree. <laughs> now this is the last one. Who is more likely to whisper someone else's wins but scream their L's? Ooh. Um, I would say, so on this last episode, you know, they show, um, you know, Candy and Kenya, like, you know, talking about Marlo's, um, you know, uh, sentence mm-hmm. again. Uh-huh. So, you know, I hated seeing that because it's like, on one hand, you keep saying that you don't want to define someone by something they did 23 years ago. So I'm, I'm going to have to go with Kenya on that. Like she constantly brings up, you know, Marlo's, um, you know, uh, sentence or whatever from 23 years ago. Um, and she certainly doesn't talk about the fact that she has her foster care programs and she's doing all these great things now, which I wish we could focus more on. <laughs> I know, but you know, I think it's kind of deflection because, you know, when you aren't happy with yourself, you just want to shed a light on someone else because you don't want the attention on you. Love Kenya dearly, but you know, hopefully one day it'll be more of a sisterhood and she will scream out wins and also scream out L's. So we didn't talk about one person and then we're going to wrap this up. How, what are your thoughts about Courtney joining Real Housewives of Atlanta? Oh, I thought Courtney was a great addition to the cast. I mean, she came in and she was bold and fearless. And I think that's what it takes to be a good, you know, addition to the show. And so, yeah, I I thought she was great. And she's going to continue to show up, you know, throughout the season. And so I know it's hard for your first season when you come in. People do not like when you ruffle too many feathers. Um, But I do I do like her confidence. um, And I love that she, you know, was fearless in, in how she went after you know, sharing her feelings and and stuff. So I, I really thought she was a great addition to the show. Got it. So outside of Real Housewives of Atlanta, one thing that I really want you to share with my audience is Mommy Nation. Talk about yes. that, please. Yes. So Mommy Nation is a blog and virtual community that I started over four years ago um, and now um, co-owned with my best friend, Michael Steen. And we, our goal and our heart is around providing community and resources for black moms all over the world. Um, We do this by blogging. We have incredible um, experiences uh, that we, that we usually share on our our blog and on social media. You can join us for. Um, We also have a 501c3, a nonprofit, and we raise money for different causes that impact our community. This year, we're focusing on the black maternal mortality rate and really trying mm. to make an impact on improving the outcomes of, you know, of birthing experiences for black moms. So it's my passion project. And I, you know, I think for me, I am very blessed to be a mom and I'm very blessed to have a lot of support and great resources. And I just can't imagine what it's like for a mother who doesn't have that support because I know no matter where we're from, no matter what part of the earth we live on, 
every single mom wants to give their child the best opportunities in life. And so it's our goal to support moms and to have and to create community. I love it. You know, this reminds me of a conversation I had with my daughter just last night because she was comparing the errors of motherhood when I had her as opposed to now. And I'm just like, you know what? Now there's so many resources for mothers out there. We may not know about it. And that's why I decided to bring it up because they're out there. And yeah. I remember having limited access to resources, not because yeah. it wasn't there, it's because I didn't know that yeah, it was no. there. Yeah. So yeah. once again, can you tell us where can we find Mommy Nation and how can they join? Yeah, so you can go to Mommy Nation. It's M-O-M-M-I nation.com. That's our blog platform. We also have a very vibrant community on social media. Over 150,000 moms follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. And that's where we share a lot of what we're doing, uh, obviously, on the blog as well. And then we have a mom ambassador program, which is kind of like the heartbeat of Mommy Nation, which is our moms that sign up and we do monthly calls. We, we give them, they're like the first people to know everything that's happening with Mommy Nation. They have a real voice in our community. Um, they're a part of our board of our um, Mommy Nation gives. And so there are plenty of ways to, to activate at Mommy Nation and the highest level is to become a mom ambassador. And you can learn all about it on mommynation.com. I love it. I love it. See, once again, you're giving audiences everything that they need. You know, uh -huh. track star, television personality, sports commentator, and you're giving back to mothers because you are an amazing mother yourself. Sonia, thank you so much for this conversation. Continue blessings to you. And um, I'll be tuned in each and every week for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Take care. Thank you so much. This was great. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> So there you have it, everyone. Sonia Richards Ross. Um, you can see her every single Sunday, Sundays on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I really like what she brings to television. I think it's people who put Vaseline on their face and razor blades under their nails. <laughs> Those are the ones who just want to see the fighting every single day. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I want to really see them building relationships amongst the women, the sisterhood. I want to see how they create and maintain and leverage their respective businesses. Um, I want to see their relationships either with their boyfriends or with their husbands, or if they, you know, part of the LGBTQ plus whatever, what, what your partner, I want to see all of that. I want to see the inner workings. I want to see the dynamics of everything. I don't just want people to show up at a restaurant and then, you know, throw the martini in somebody's face. This is on I don't you. want to see that. There's enough shows for that. Don't want to see it. So, like I said, continue success for Sonya Richards Ross. I'm so true. Like, this is this the is first time I met somebody you. with my name, chat. <laughs> so this has been another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. Please make sure that you Are subscribe. You Sonya on Air streams across every major streaming platform. Also make sure that you get your Sonya on Air spring, summer merch. Shout out to Sharija. <laughs> what else? What else? Um, and make sure that you shop using Instacart. Well, this has been another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. Smooches sauce. Mwah.